So we've been talking a lot about transfers recently in the Overwatch League and it's time for some different news. Now, the last time we talked about contenders, it was Adamant Mystic and it wasn't very, very great news, was it? But this time we have got some great, great news. This is the return of the Gauntlet. So the Gauntlet took place in 2019 for the first time with the winners, winners being Element Mystic. And this was where we got to see a bunch of uh, top teams from each uh, each uh, region in contenders in tier two become come together and decide who's the best tier two team in the world. And at that time, it was Element Mystic. Now, this is going to be different this year. Obviously, we have the problems with COVID-19 and stuff like that, which makes uh, intercontinental competitions very difficult. We saw that with the Overwatch League, and we only got a very small amount of games that were intercontinental. The rest were done NA and Asia split. And this is how the Gauntlet is going to take place this year. But it is going to be massively, massively expanded on what it was in 2019. So let's read through this post that's on the Overwatch League website then. The 2020 season of Overwatch Contenders is nearly over. Cont Contenders finishes at the end of this month. 29th, I believe, is the Grand Finals for North America and the e EU, which is the last two regions. So there is the one question remaining. Who is the best of the best? The creme cream of the crop in Tier 2. This year, the Contenders Gauntlet will take place online in four regions. Asia, South America, Europe, and North America. Throughout December, top teams in each region will compete in, a in various formats to determine the best teams in the world and the share of the regional prize pool. The online format will allow players from around the world to remain competitive on similar ping while showcasing their talent one last time in 2020. Here are the details for all of the regions. So, let's start off with Asia then. The participants will be 10 teams in Asia. Four from China, four from Korea, one from the Pacific, and one from Australia. They will compete for a share of a US $150,000 prize pool. So, qualification then. China will qualify the two the top performing teams from 2020 Season 2. So there's four teams coming from China. Now, China is in the midst of completing its season. Currently in the winners' finals, you've got Team CC and Flag Gaming. So there'll be two of those teams. And then it'll be two from either, like this player, First Fabulous Fighter, Billy Billy Gaming, and the one winner. Um, so we won't be seeing the Guangzhou Charge Academy, which is Ultra Prime. They didn't make it far enough. But it'll be one of those, it'll be two two Team CC and Flag Gaming, and it'll be uh, two of the last remaining, like this player, First Fabulous Fighter, Billy Billy Gaming, or the one winner. I would imagine Billy Billy Gaming will be one of them because they are a very good team in, in China. And Team CC have dominated China for a very long time now. So I'm expecting Team CC to do actually quite well in this. But then we have the Australian region. So the Australian region will qualify one person to this tournament. They will be qualifying their Season 2 champion. So the Season 2 champion from Australia was Ground Zero Gaming. They won it over Mind Freak. Mind Freak were the winners in the Season 1 of 2020. Uh, Ground Zero Gaming, Mind Freak, they're two teams that are at the top of the Australia very often. Um, we don't have certain teams that are Direwolves, are another uh, very good team from, uh, from Australia as well. But we will be seeing Ground Zero Gaming, and that shall be interesting. I think it will be Ground Zero Gaming and the Pacific uh, qualifiers will be this, they will be looked at as the weakest teams in this competition, that's without a doubt. Um, who will be weaker, the Pacific or the or Ground Zero Gaming? I would say the Pacific, but again, it remains to be seen. Talking of Pacific, Pacific are going to qualify the winner of... They don't have contenders anymore, so we have to find something that they do have. And this was the Ace Championship tournament that they performed in October. So, this featured Far East Society, Jaeger, A-Bang, Connect Gaming, Jacob Bird, Watermelon Waddlers, Battle Angel, and Banana Bahava. And these guys fought it out, and the winner of this tournament will be competing in the Gauntlet. The winner of this tournament was A-Bang. A-Bang is a Taiwanese featuring team with one member from Hong Kong. And they will go into this as a representative from the Pacific, considering there is no contenders region for the Pacific anymore. And they will probably go into this as the so-called weakest team. But one caveat to that, last time we said that about the Pacific region, it was Talon. And they actually did mighty bloom and well in the Gauntlet. But it was a slightly different looking gauntlet when they had the opportunity to go up against the likes of XL2 Academy and Gladiators Legion. A lot has changed since 2019, I think we can all agree on that. Then we have Korea. So, Korea is uh, is uh, is the one that's the outlier here, because Korea will qualify the top two teams from the Season 2 playoffs. So this was the people that featured in the Grand Finals, 
This will be World Game Star Phoenix, and this will be Runaway. And these two teams will go in as the favourites. That's without a doubt. Um, Korea is always seen as the pinnacle of Asian uh, Asian Overwatch, and these two teams will go in as mighty, mighty big favourites. Runaway lost out last time. They lost out to Element Mystic. WGS Phoenix, they didn't feature last time. They're a new up-and-coming team from Korea, and they are current, current Korean, Korean Contenders champions. So they should do fairly well, and they will probably go in as the strongest team on paper. But then we will have two other people from Korea. This will be decided through an open bracket qualifier, and this could feature anyone. This could feature anyone. And when we get to North America and Europe, this open bracket qualifier idea becomes much further expanded. So this could mean any Korean team that we've seen, even Korean teams we haven't seen, could qualify for the gauntlet. Any Korean talent, which I think is is very, very interesting. So when we talk about the likes of OZ Gaming, Element Mystic, Gen G, Team BM, T1, Talon, Team Diamond, uh, OC Blast, they all have a chance. Everyone who's competed in Korean contenders this season, but also older or less well-known teams, teams from open division in, in Korea, etc. Any team can qualify. So I think that's really, really cool. And I think it's a really sweet idea. So the Asian championship for this will take place. Uh, the group stage will take place from December the 10th to the 13th. And then the knockout stage will take place uh, between December the 18th and the 20th. So just before Christmas. Then the format, the group stage will take place over one weekend, followed by a final knockout stage the following weekend. The group stage will consist of the first to three maps in a round robin format. The top two teams from each group advance to the knockout stage. Group A will be the Chinese second seed, the Korean third seed, the Chinese fourth seed, and the Pacific seed. Group B will be the Korean second seed, the Chinese third seed, the Korean fourth seed, and the Australian seed. The knockout stage will be a 16 double elimination bracket. The top seeded team from both China and Korea receive buys into the bracket semi finals, so that will most likely be Team CC and World Game Star Phoenix. Uh, while the four teams that qualified from the group stage will start from the upper bracket. The grand finals will be a first to four match. So, that is the Asian region, but we have two more regions to go through. Now we are moving over to South America. So, South America is going to get its own tournament. The participants will be eight teams that will compete for a share of the US $75,000 prize pool. The qualification will be set out as follows. So, we will see the top four teams from the Contenders of South America Season 2 playoffs and top, the top four teams from an open bracket qualifier, and they will qual qualify for this gauntlet. So, in South America, we haven't actually seen the overall playoffs yet, so we don't know exactly who those, who those, uh, who those people are going to be. But uh, the top seeded teams in the playoffs are Dignity and they say Majestos and Warpigs. All of those teams have picked up a monthly title in South America this year. Dignity and then they say Warpigs, but Majestos picked it up as a different name. This was Dark Mode South America when Dark Mode were doing in different regions. Majestos is actually owned by Noble, the North American organization, and they are competing in South America. So you would expect that those four teams would be the teams that do very well and be the ones that qualify through to the gauntlet for South America, but we don't know exactly. Again, there's outliers like Petitos and people like that who may also get their try. But then we have the open bracket qualifier and then anyone can enter. So the schedule for this will be the group stage will be taking place uh, between the 4th and the 6th of December. And then between the 11th and the 13th of December, we will see the knockout stage. The format, the group stage will be in a dual tournament format and consist of the first to three matches and the top three from each group advance to the final knockout stage the following weekend. The knockout stage will be a six team elimination bracket with all matches in a first to four format. So there's going to be a lot of overwatch for South America. It's going to be very interesting to see. So that is, that is South America in a nutshell. I think it'll be really interesting. It's a shame that it is kind of isolated to South America, but there's not much we can do about that in these current conditions. And it will be interesting to see how it works out. Uh, it will be very, very interesting. Um, so that brings us to chunky region. Chunky, chunky, chunky regions. North America and Europe. So in both regions, 12 teams will compete for a share of a US $100,000 prize pool per region. So there'll be $100,000 for Europe, $100,000 for North America, and there'll be 12 teams in each region. So 
qualification. The eight teams from the November t contenders tournament in each region will qualify. So, everyone who makes it into the November tournament will qualify. This means that the four teams that came top of October will, so this is British Hurricane, Obey Alliance, Young and Beautiful and Sheer Cold in Europe. They will all be featuring in the gauntlet for Europe. Then we have to go to Contenders Trials, because that's where we're going to see the rest of the teams. And it will be four of these teams. It will be either Ex Oblivione, Avoided, Shoes Monaco EU, Angry Titans, Violet Sped Momentum, Vox Nihili, Caspian, OT Pog, Vasta Gaming, Ad Astra, Astra Per Espera, Old and Board, and New Kings. Now, Old and Board and New Kings are two new teams. Two new teams with actually quite a lot of quality, who, and they came through a tournament called the Banana Brawl. And New Kings have people like Lalshus and Elivo, Oni God. They've got a lot of good teams. Jofi, uh, Yofi and Afox. I wouldn't be surprised if New Kings were one of those teams to feature. They won their first game very com comprehensively. Another two teams to win their first game in November trials very comprehensively. Ex Oblivione and Olden Board. So there could be another two teams right there. And then we've got a tussle between a load of other teams as well. So whoever comes out of these content this Contenders Trials tournament will also be in there and it'll be very interesting I mean, it will be really really interesting because it's going to be a massive massive tournament so in north america then we will see the top four teams from the october tournament this will be odyssey revival american tornado and susuno uh Susu susuno Su susano i really really question that name sometimes and it bugs me and then we have the qualifying, the Trials Tournament. So in the Trials Tournament, we're seeing Square One, Drifters, Noble, 200MS, Uprising Academy, Kratos, Delta Phoenix, Quara, Power Zero, No Evil, Antiku, Antiku, and Last Hope. Now, looking at the first results from this tournament, Uprising Academy have done fairly well, Hour Zero have done fairly well, uh, Antiku and Drifters have done very well. So those are teams that we could see, but again, it is still pretty open. It's very early days in Trials for November. So we will see who gets through. But those are the early contenders for that. In these two regions, the it will be they will be joined, the eight teams will be joined by the top four teams from open bracket qualifiers. So this is gonna be massive. So these four teams can come from anywhere. And it'll be four teams per region. Let's just go through the schedule in a minute and we'll talk more about these open bracket qualifiers. The schedule will be from November the 26th, 28th to December the 6th, we will see open bracket qualifiers. Then during de between December and the 10th to the 19th, we will see the knockout stage. And then on December the 20th, we will see show matches. So that will be very interesting. But the format is the open bracket qualifiers will take place over two weekends. They will involve 256 teams in a single elimination format. That is open divisional level of size. That is massive. This means that there are a whole host of teams, teams you've never heard of, teams that don't even exist yet that could qualify. Like, no joke, going across the whole top level of EU. It, it, that is mind blowing. And NA as well. Like, 256 teams in a single elimination bracket. That is massive absolutely massive and it's great to see that loads of people are going to get a chance uh, at featuring in a gauntlet the 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 pinnacle of tier 2 overwatch um each match will be a first to three uh format and it'll be a single elimination bracket the top four teams will advance to the knockout stage where 12 teams will battle it out in a double elimination bracket all matches will be a first to three format except for the grand finals which will be a first to four so you have your big open bracket qualifier, which will decide the four teams to join the contenders teams. And then, so four teams whittled down all the way from 256. Yes, 256. And from what I'm gathering from this, like, if I was to enter Illusion Z, for example, they could enter into that. It is pretty bonkers. Like, it is pretty darn bonkers. Um, it's very interesting. And I think it's a great way for Blizzard to open up contenders and the gauntlet to a big wide audience but once we get past that we've got past the we've got past the knockout stage we get to the show matches so the day after the grand finals there will be two show matches one between the north american runner-up and the european runner-up and one between the north american champion and the european champion that is like the pacific showdown uh pacific atlantic showdowns it would be the atlantic showdown but that was like the showdowns we had midway through the contenders 
season last year, uh, in 2019, where we had the showdown matches and they kind of decided how many people would go from each region to the original gauntlet. That's what that kind of is. So we will see the best team in Europe versus the best team in North America. Now, on current uh, looks, that would be Odyssey versus British Hurricane as the best. And then something like American Tornado or Revival going up against uh, oh, Bay Alliance. It was a Bay Alliance who used to be Raspberry Racers. They were second in uh, they were second in October. So it'd be something like that at the moment, but it can change. But British Hurricane have dominated European contenders, so I would expect them to become the number one seed for that. But again, they have to get through this Gauntlet tournament first. And I think that's why we're seeing these new teams uh, with a lot of quality to them suddenly pop up because they're seeing this Gauntlet tournament and they're seeing an opportunity. And they're seeing an opportunity to demonstrate their skill to Overwatch League teams. And to a caveat to this is, because this is going on, we may not see some teams announce their moves in the Overwatch League until Christmas. I mean that. Because I'm not expecting British Hurricane to obliterate their roster before the gauntlet, where they will want to win a megaton of money. And considering the, the skill and the run they're on, I doubt whether they're going to disrupt that right now. So if London's intention is to promote British Hurricane, which we believe it is, we may not have that announcement until maybe even the new year. So that is that is a downer for, for London fans, I guess. But it's good to see that your tier 2 team is doing very well. And obviously, any other team that's got intentions of bringing up NA or EU talent, or maybe some Korean talent as well, you're going to have probably to wait for this contenders tournament because some teams are not going to want to give up their talent quite yet and be obliterated just before a season. Hence, we're not seeing too many moves from the likes of WGS Phoenix. Now, I've been anticipating that quite a few of WGS Phoenix are going to get picked up, um, but it hasn't, not, not, it hasn't happened yet. And I think this is why. Because we're seeing a gauntlet tournament and WGS Phoenix will want to go into their full strength like they did in the Korean contenders tournament and try and win it. So we are probably going to have to wait a little longer for uh, a lot of players to be promoted from contenders to the Overwatch League, if that is the intention of some teams, because this is this is going to come in the way, it's going to get in the way, uh, ultimately. Um, so a lot of the Overwatch League moves we're seeing at the moment, they're going to be between Overwatch League teams or players that don't have a current, uh, don't have any potential of getting to Gauntlet or don't have uh they don't have any team right now so that's a caveat to that to mention but this is the gauntlet for 2020 it is much much bigger than the gauntlet was in 2019 i will be covering this i will be covering this it's, it's lovely to get back to some a bit of contenders action and i wish the best of luck every single team that's in it all these teams that could come from the open bracket qualifiers and stuff like that it's a massive opportunity to get yourself noticed to get yourself in front of scouts for the Overwatch League and stuff like that. And I wish you guys all the best. And I think this is going to be some some fantastic Overwatch. Fantastic Overwatch. And we do get to see a little bit of inter-region rivalry in North America versus Europe and the Asian regions as well. China versus Korea and Pacific and Australia bumped in there as well. It's only unfortunate that South America couldn't be a bigger part of that either. But... I am going to leave it here for this one. So thank you guys so much for this video. If you'd like to give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.